Where do you want to set up? Uh, I think our gym looks good. I think it's easy for people to think that we're just on a big vacation. And that's totally fine, they can think that, but it's actually a lot of work. It's a lot of fun work, but it's a lot of work. We left on December 2nd, and we've been working on the road for eight months now. People also think that we either got really lucky, or we just had a ton of money to, to do a trip like this. And it's not also neither of those things. I mean, I do feel like we're really lucky, but it's not because we have a ton of money. It's definitely not the easiest, but it's definitely the most fun and fulfilling work I've ever done. I mean, we don't really ever take a day off, even if we're not filming. Our days can be filled with countless decisions that we have to make. Documenting and telling stories from the road as we drive from well, Vancouver Island to Patagonia and then hopefully up to Alaska. But that's only half the work. I mean, the amount of decisions and planning and attention that it takes to drive overland internationally is a job in and of itself. We plan our days and our routes maybe two to three days in advance because we like to leave room for spontaneity and for small miracles to happen. And that's actually worked really well for us. It also means that we are constantly in decision-making process. It's not like we have an entire map of everything that we're doing, where we're going, an itinerary, and then we can just wake up and follow it. That's not how we travel. It's not what really creates meaning for us. We like to have that unexpected gift. The hard things are not what you expect. We live in a 48 square foot house on wheels. And our day starts with coffee, always. And then we're working. We're picking up the camera and we're deciding what we want to shoot, where we want to go, where we want to sleep, what we want to eat. And all of the decisions are constantly changing, whether we have to leave our spot super early in the morning. We're usually trying to find camping that is free or very inexpensive so we can stay on our budget. And by about 1 p.m., we've already made a dozen small decisions. So then by 6 or 7 p.m. when we're trying to make dinner or trying to set up camp, my brain's already exhausted. We've had the camera out a million times and it's like, I don't, I don't know what I want to eat. I don't know where I want to sleep. I, I just want to relax. I just want to put my head down. But it requires intent, intention, and attention to, to focus on the little things, like maintaining your health. <laughs> Our job is to create beautiful films, show amazing scenery, and tell unforgettable stories. So decision making is huge because you don't tell amazing stories at a truck stop every night. I'm not saying you can't to each their own. <laughs> there are some beautiful truck stops. However, we, a, a huge part of our day is deciding where we're gonna camp. And that can take hours. And that can also take effort and research just for an aesthetic camp spot. The topic of safety comes up a lot in our decision making, and it's a real thing, especially when you're overlanding Latin America. Our best compass for determining safety is really our intuition and our internal feelings about a place. So that means that you're on, right? you're focused. As we're driving new roads every day, we're 
catching vibes, making instantaneous judgment calls on an area. I don't know how many times we have planned a camp spot and thought we were being very diligent and showed up and the gates locked, they're closed for the season, etc, etc. There's so many reasons why someone will close their gates. And then you're forced to retaliate, you're, for, you're forced to make a, yet another decision. And it's usually at dark, <laughs> you're very tired from driving all day, and all of a sudden you have to just turn on fight or flight mode because we don't drive in the dark when we're traveling. So you're on your phone, <laughs> you're, sometimes you're going to this place for Wi-Fi and you don't have Wi-Fi on your phone. There have been moments where we have put Starlink up in a parking lot just to find a camp spot at almost dark. You do all the same things that you do in your home, you know, like wash your sheets, do your dishes. We have chores and we try and bundle them all into one big errands day. And that usually involves finding safe parking in a city, locking up our truck and walking around town to find a place to drop off our laundry. And those days can be really fun. We've definitely got better at them, but at the beginning of our trip, the first few months, it was really stressful. We didn't like leaving the truck. Uh, we, we weren't that good at just those simple tasks because you're so used to being at home and having the ease of access to these things that make you more comfortable. Oh, I can just like turn on my hot water and do my dishes. Oh, I can just like have a nap while I do my laundry. It's like, no, I have to sit here. That is one of the benefits of Latin America where you can just drop off your laundry, come back the next day and it's clean. It's just, it involves planning because you have to be at that place twice. Perhaps one of the most important decisions that we're constantly making, or that's always on our mind, is where we're gonna set up to work to edit and produce these videos because not only is our truck, our transportation, and our home, it's a production studio. We set up for sometimes two or three days to compile the content, write scripts, write voiceovers, and you know produce what you're seeing now in all of our adventure films. And thankfully, we love that. We love that process. It's fulfilling, it's creative. It's also exhausting when the things that you plan don't work out. For instance, you find a, a camp spot that sounds really good from the reviews, but you get there and it's loud or it's filled with garbage or there isn't any sun for your solar panels to run Starlink, so you have to move. There's like, when you're trying to be in a creative flow to create what you hope is a masterpiece, it's 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 almost, it's like you're tightrope walking, right? I'm like I'm in the flow, I'm tightrope walking, and then man, a big gust of wind, sometimes figuratively, sometimes very literally, can knock you off your flow, and then two to three days can sometimes turn it into four, maybe five days, and then all of a sudden you're not ahead on content. All of a sudden you're. I say, you all of a sudden, I'm uploading a video that I just finished editing that's about the day, like about yesterday, that is content that we filmed yesterday, and I'm uploading it today. So it's like, that's it. So it's like, you, the game with YouTube is you're always chasing the next thing. So it, if you don't have any backlog content, then it's like, okay, we just finished editing, but like, now we gotta leave. Now we gotta go find more stuff, find more campsites, find more amazing places to film and tell stories. So it's like, you're always on in a different way. You're uh, on behind the computer doing the editing or you're on driving and filming and creating content. It's a lot. And then bundle that all together with the aspect of international overlanding and all the complications that come with that. <laughs> It stacks up really quick. This is not a vacation. <laughs> it feels like the trip of a lifetime most of the time. It does. But this isn't a 
lounge by the pool, drive at your own pace, do whatever you want kind of trip. This is our job. And I'd say we have a pretty epic job, but there isn't, there has not been one single day on this trip where we haven't put a little piece of our heart into what we do for work. Whether it be filming, whether it be thinking of a feeling for a voiceover, whether it just be intentionally being our best selves so that we can film the next day. It's constantly bettering ourselves for this job. Most people that need this trip or a trip like this save up a lot of money for years. And we did save some money. We spent it on building a rig that would keep us safe, comfortable, and be able to do all of these things via a house and a production studio and an awesome place to live so that we could produce these stories and make this our career. This is a perfect example of one of the challenges. I don't know if you can hear it, but the birds in the background, the dogs, I can hear people singing. And it's amazing, but it's like that happens so often when we're trying to edit or shoot something specific. And it's just a stack of like all these little little things that you, you can't really plan for. We're making this dream come true even more every day. It's not because we have just sold our house and are retired at 30 making videos for fun. It is fun. And it's also our career. We're also not driving a normal vehicle, which means, well, <laughs> it comes with its own complications. Hopefully, a lot of people watch us for us and the stories we tell, but I know that a lot of people watch us for that truck. And in a way, I guess we intended it to be like that. We wanted to build something that was the world's first, was an iconic vehicle that will hopefully have a pedigree by the time this trip is done. I, I feel like we've done that and we're part of like car enthusiasts and truck culture and we like cool stuff. I want to walk away from my rig and look back and be excited, you know? It, it, it also means that you're going to be pulling out wrenches <laughs> a little more frequently than the people that just <laughs> are driving stock rigs. So if you're going to do a trip like this and uh, you don't want to get greasy, then just 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 buy a four under, <laughs> buy a new four under, and just drift. Or just drive whatever you got, but building a 47 year old motorhome, making it four by four, is uh, yeah going to have its own long list of roadside complications. Roadside complications. Yeah, breaking down on the side of the road our first day in Mexico was probably the last thing that I wanted. I think I wished for that not to happen months before that day, and yet it still happened. Yes, driving an old vehicle has put us on the side of the road in Mexico a couple times, not just once. but. The best part about driving an old vehicle that you built yourself is you know every nut, every bolt, every sound, every leak. You know every square inch so that when something does go wrong, the list of <laughs> trying to figure out what's wrong becomes very small because you built it. <laughs> So it was probably your fault <laughs> and that's the fun part and I think that's why we're confident that we can make it to Argentina regardless of a couple roadside breakdowns. <laughs> Our days are filled with laughter and amazement and joy and freedom 
and also missing home. We come from an amazing place and we have a lot of incredible, exciting things to come home to. So we're not running away from anything. We just wanted to see the world and expand our perspective on what it's actually like. And that's, that's awesome. We're also, I mean, I speak for myself, I, I get homesick. I miss my friends, I miss my mom. And I think that's just a natural part of travel. But I do feel very blessed to have something to miss. I don't know if everyone has something like that. And I think it's special when you do. We miss home. <laughs> and I, I don't think we admit it often enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. This trip is amazing, but it really puts into perspective the beauty of your own <laughs> world, the comfort of your own creature comforts, your family, friends. But this is a journey that <laughs> Matthew and I are never going to forget. And we want to make sure that this time capsule that we're sharing with you is one you won't forget either. <laughs>